quite a fishing rod we have here, isn't it? And we usually think of fishing as purely sport. But at the Hanford Atomic Products operation in Richland, Washington, on the bank of the Columbia, we do a type of fishing that Isaac Walt would never have dreamed of. This work is done by the Aquatic Biology Operation, which is headed up by Dr. Richard F. Foster. We have Dr. Foster with us now, and I'd like to introduce him. He's manager of the Atomic Products, or the, uh, the Aquatic Biology Operation. How do you do, Dr. Foster? Hello, Frank. I'd like to ask you a blunt and point-blank question to begin with, if it's unfair, just say so. What is the work of your Aquatic Biology Operation? Well, this is really quite simple, Frank. Aquatic Biology has to do with the study of life in the water. And here at Hanford, the largest body of water which we have is the Columbia River. And so our work is mainly uh, with the life in the Columbia. Now I expect your next question may be as to why should we at Hanford study life in the Columbia River? But the answer to this is also quite simple. We have a unique, unique kind of effluent uh, from the Hanford reactors. Water from the Columbia River uh, first goes through the uh, reactors in order to cool them. Uh, it is then returned to the Columbia River. Some of the dissolved minerals which are present in Columbia River water become mildly radioactive. And we would like to know uh, when this material gets into the Columbia River, uh, whether any of these uh, mildly radioactive materials are picked up by the aquatic life, and if so, uh, where it becomes deposited. You're, you've given us some indication of what your work is about, Dr. Foster. I know that much of it must be accomplished on the river. Would you tell us what kinds of aquatic life you encounter in your work on the river? Yes, Frank, the kinds of things which you find in the river are much like those which you find on dry land. We have the green plants uh, represented in the river by algae. Some of this algae is present as uh, tiny floating cells present in the river water. Other, is, uh, other types of algae grow on the rocks. We have many different kinds of organisms such as the uh, snails and insect larvae which eat on the uh, algae on the rocks. And of course, the fish may feed on uh, these uh, kinds of uh, uh, life which grow on the rocks. Other kinds of fish feed on other kinds of fish. So our problem really is that to study all kinds of uh, life in the Columbia River. Well, I happen to know that as you work on the Columbia River, you gather specimens and you brought along some preserved specimens which are rather unusual. Would you show them to us now? We brought along a few, uh, perhaps some of the more unusual kinds. The plankton uh, algae are, are, are too small to, uh, to show very effectively. We do have clams present in the Columbia River. Uh, clams uh, were once used in the Columbia by uh, Indians. We also have uh, crayfish in the Columbia River. Crayfish, uh, uh, which grow to a large size, but for some reason or other, they're not a very popular food for people. We have two different kinds of fish. The small uh, bullhead, which uh, lays in wait at the bottom of the uh, river uh, to uh, capture other fish which may swim by. And of course, a couple of very small specimens of the sturgeon, which is the largest fish in the Columbia. I'm sure many of our viewers have already seen uh, uh, pictures of the mighty salmon, which are uh, very uh, common and very valuable to the Columbia River system. Well, Dr. Foster, it's quite easy for, me, for any of us to understand how you gather samples of this size, but as I understand it, the plankton, plankton are very small. They're almost microscopic. Uh, how do you gather those out of the river? We have to strain these out with a net which has an extremely fine mesh. These uh, nets are made out of uh, silk bolting cloth. Uh, their mesh is so fine that they strain the majority of the organisms uh, out of the water, but some of the organisms are so small that they even go through the mesh of uh, these kinds of nets. Mm -hmm. Now, after you do gather these plankton samples, I imagine you take them back to the laboratory and do something with them. Uh, this is right. Uh, we're interested in the radioactive materials which are present in the plankton and also in the other forms such as the fish. When we get these materials back to the laboratory, we reduce them to an ash, sort of a cremation process. Uh, this is so that we can put them in a counter uh, and count the amount of radioactivity uh, very effectively. Uh, we, we put these on a small plate, which is about the size of a quarter, and these uh, 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 plates then are placed under a Geiger tube. We can rather accurately determine the amount of radioactive materials which are present. I see. Now, in your work on the river, do you make any other tests that might be interesting and are significant in your work? 
We're, of course, interested in the water because, uh, after all, what affects the water affects the organisms. And so we take samples of the water. Sampling the water is rather uh, simple at the surface, but when we want to sample at depths, this requires uh, special equipment. We have here a bottle which is used for uh, sampling water at uh, any desired depth. We send down a little metal weight which trips the ends and we're, we can bring the water back up to the surface and know the situation at, uh, at any particular depth. We're also interested in current, how fast the, uh, the water goes by the organisms because they are affected by this. Certain ones like fast water, others like slow water. We can measure the current with a current meter which works on the same principle as the anemometer which is used by the weatherman. These are only a few of the various kinds of things which we do. It certainly is very interesting and I've enjoyed and I know our viewers have enjoyed this brief uh, resume of your work on the river. I know you didn't tell us all the work. Now I know that you must be doing some work in your laboratory since you are a scientist and are working with scientists. Would you tell us something about your laboratory work, Dr. Foster? Well, the the work in the field would not mean very much without uh, correlating this uh, with the uh, work uh, which we do in the lab. This is because the amount of radioactive materials which are present in Columbia River organisms are so low, we don't really expect to see any effects. In the laboratory, we can uh, use mixtures of the effluent which greatly exceed those which would ever be pleasant in the Columbia River. And we can use fish such as this, uh, these little white fish, to uh, tell us how strong a mixture of effluent uh, could be tolerated by fish in the Columbia River. We can also use uh, these kinds of fish uh, to trace the uh, radioactive materials uh, through the various tissues. By feeding uh, these fish radioactive food, we can uh, find out then how much uh, of the material is picked up and where it is uh, deposited. So our laboratory program works in conjunction with the uh, field survey program. I see, Dr. Foster, I'm going to be awfully unfair now, but in 15 seconds, could you tell us the significance of your work? Uh, the work in the Columbia River is this, the results are this. Uh, we do find that these fish pick up uh, very small amounts of uh, radioactive materials. But the amount which they pick up is uh, not at all hazardous. So we know that the, from this angle, the uh, operation of the plant is uh, quite safe. Similar programs are also carried on uh, by other components uh, for the atmosphere, for the soil, for the drinking water. This are, are part of the safety program which uh, uh, ensures that the environs of the Hanford Works are maintained in a very safe manner. Thank you very much, Dr. Foster. We enjoyed having you on Hanford Science Forum and telling us of your fascinating and I'm sure significant work at Hanford. Glad to have been here. And now I'd like to introduce our science student of the week who is uh, Mr. Burke, what is your first name? Doyle. Doyle Burke. Doyle is a senior at Columbia High School, and uh, last year he participated in the Mid-Columbia Science Fair and won a prize with this critter here. Doyle, what is this critter here, and what uh, prize did you win? Well, this is a dog skeleton, and it was my uh, entry into the Mid-Columbia Science Fair, where I placed first in zoology and uh, also a grand prize of the fair. Well, congratulations, Doyle. Now, how did you happen to think of uh, assembling a dog skeleton? Well, we had some uh, science workshops where, uh, through the efforts of GE and the Atomic Energy Commission, I was uh, able to be introduced to this idea and uh, with their help and advice. You plan to go into science as a career, I understand. What field? Well, I wanted to go into the applied science as a career where I could use both physics, chemistry, and biology and I chose for that profession the application of forestry. Uh, we have been dealing this evening with atomic energy. Are you interested in atomic energy at all? Well, I think that anyone who is interested directly or indirectly with the application of science would have a, uh, a definite view as to the use of atomic energy in its aspects. Well, Doyle, I certainly want to congratulate you, and I'm sure anyone that sees this piece of work here would on this particular piece of work. And we also wish you every success in your scientific career, and it was a pleasure having you with us. Good Thank luck. You. Hanford Science Forum is an educational feature of the General Electric Company and the United States Atomic Energy Commission at Hanford.